This is good? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, great. So in May of this past spring, the Supreme Court uh, ruled that a federal law called PAPSA was unconstitutional. And that law, I believe, restricted sports wagering in the United States with the exception of Nevada, where Las Vegas is housed, and a few other states around the country. And so that Supreme Court ruling really opened the floodgates for each state to implement and install their own sports betting regulations. And uh, as we saw over the summer, New Jersey, Delaware, uh, those are the, the two big ones. I don't know if there's a third or a fourth that Mississippi has passed. Um, their their state law and excuse me. It's interesting about what the where those two states and Mississippi. Mississippi was into steamboat, yeah, river gambling. Mississippi has a lot of casinos down there as well, so lots of gambling. <coughs> so uh, so just to just to sort of wrap this up, uh, it uh, the, the floodgates open to allow each state to to implement their own sports betting regulations, and a few states have jumped on. On that opportunity almost immediately and as we move forward here uh, I expect more to do so New York as it <coughs> pertains to, to us here in Onondaga County and, and in Central New York uh, so far has not passed their own state law they had an opportunity to do that over the summer uh, the state and assembly uh, couldn't get on the same page they still wanted to iron out a, a lot of complex details about how this would work um, and so as of now, that discussion is really tabled until the state legislature reconvenes early <laughs> next year in January. Um, so that's that's as soon as, it, as the state may be able to pass something. Now, um, there is technically a, I believe, 2013 law that can be used in effect right now for uh, the state-owned casinos to be able to run a sports betting wing within with on site, but um, the key difference with that is in order to bet on sports, you need to physically go into one of these four state-owned casinos, which they're located, I believe, in big ones in Binghamton area, ones out in Buffalo area, uh, Yellow Brick, uh, out in Waterloo, and there's a fourth that I'm not gonna probably one in Delaware County or some resort there in the Catskills. Yes, Catskills. Yes, Monticello is the uh, is the fourth. Del, Del Lago? Yes, Del Lago is one of them. No, Del Lago not, is. Not, not, not Yellow Brick. No, not Yellow Brick. Um, Del, Del Lago is down, I think, near, near Warner's or between Syracuse and Rochester. Yeah, out, out, outside of Waterloo, I believe, yeah. is, is, is down there. Yeah, that's great. Um, but you, you, they have not gotten approval. The State Gaming Commission needs to set up sort of the rules and, and decide who they can issue licenses to. And, and so far, there really hasn't been any movement in that regard to allow those four casinos in New York City to allow sports betting. So that's sort of where we're at right now with with New York State and, and sports betting. Um, and like I said, it, it's something to, to sort of continue to monitor when the, st when the legislature reconvenes in, in January of 2019. Once sports wagering comes about, and it's gonna come about, sooner or later it's gonna come about, might not come about next year, but it's going to come about. I might have gray hair by then, but it's going to come about. How will the media play into that? Because you are media. You represent media today in the West area. How will the media get involved in that? Right now, I don't know if I don't, but I know that used to publish the lines in, in the sports page. I haven't seen it because I really haven't looked. But basically... Oh, we used to publish box scores for every baseball game too in the sports section. And that, as newsprint has sort of shrunken and space for our paper has declined. So you don't have we've cut some of those anymore. things out. But the betting lines the betting are in USA Today. Yeah, they're, they're oh, still in the USA. USA. You won't find them in the Syracuse paper because of just uh, you don't have space for it. There's no space for it, but they're still they're still in, in some of the national So say, <coughs> just for hypothetical purposes, wagering is now in full force. Okay, you can, you can get a bet 
Well, just when they're pulling you in the wagon, you're getting a quarter of a push up to them. Will that change your philosophy locally, or everybody's going to have to depend on the USA Today to get the wagon? Uh, you know, I think that's so a good get question. Them on the internet. That's a good question. I think I think we'll see how how much of an appetite our audience has for it. Um, I will say, just in, in in general, big picture media terms, I don't anticipate it changing changing too much because because sports betting, whether it's legal or not legal, has been going on for many many years. And um, you know, just because it's not legal yet in New York State, every week we put out a story uh, about the betting line for the Syracuse football That's game. That's right. You have and so you we, say they're favored by X amount of points. Right. You're dead on into it. Right, because we know we know somewhere whether it's legal or not, there's still an appetite for that information out there. People are interested in, in knowing mm -hmm. that information, um, and so from that from that vantage point, I don't I don't see it changing. Now, we see this a little bit more as as I guess sports betting has become more and more acceptable, if that's the correct word for it, in sort of the public mainstream. You've seen some more nationally known sports commentators take that issue head on. You know, uh, Scott Van Pelt on ESPN at his 11 o'clock show late at night uh, openly talks about, you know, what are the, some of the bad beats of the night, <clears throat> meaning what are some of the backdoor covers or the, the, the crazy outcomes uh, of that day in sports that really, you know, impacted whether you won or lost the bet. Um, Brent Musburger, who was a longtime <clears throat> college football commentator actually left the business to get into the sports wagering profession. It's a family-owned business, actually. Uh, he would sort of slip in subtly during some of his Saturday night college football broadcasts. Oh, you know, that late touchdown by Texas, uh, you know, in a meaningless game, swung the over-under to in favor of one side or another. And so it's always sort of been in the in the public realm. It's just now as, as we, as it gets more and more uh, legalized across the country, I think there's going to be an appetite for more media to to not be so or subtle about it. They're just well, going to dive well, in. Nate might have a hard time with this. I'm actually old enough to remember, and you all remember Jimmy the Greek doing yeah. CBS, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So Jimmy the Greek looks like him. Yep, there we go. <laughs> that was his only purpose on yeah. on television, right? To do the line and uh -huh. do the betting line. So it's been around forever. Uh, why is it even an issue when you can go online and look up lines and, and place bets and join pools? Well, can, can, I mean, for the law part, I'll, I guess I'll try to answer this. I mean, once again, when we're trying to figure it out, um, the law goes back to 1992. And Bill Bradley was worried about the integrity of the game, and the commissioner or the leagues got together and said, We're worried because all of a sudden, besides Nevada having sports books, states like Delaware, Oregon, and Montana created sports pools mm -hmm. where you could buy a card at the store and pick 10 games, or, mm -hmm. and, and so you could do those types of things. And so the leagues got a little worried. They got concerned, and they petitioned with Bill Bradley's help to pass what's called PASPA, which is the Professional and Amateur Sports Act, Protection Act, all right? The problem is, is that law basically grandfathered those four states and said, you can do whatever you're doing now, okay? Take a snapshot, this is the way the law is. All those other 46 states, you're out of luck. Mm -hmm. They did give New Jersey a one year window of opportunity <laughs> because of Atlantic City. So that, okay, you've got one year. If you want to create a sports book in Atlantic City, go ahead. Go but after the year, you, you're out of luck. Well, New Jersey, most you know, state governments kind of sit around, you can't get it going. So all of a sudden, especially they, for Chris Christie, yeah. So they can't do they can't do anything. And now 2011, the state of New Jersey's budget deficit needs money, and they say, how are we going to collect money? Atlantic City's a mess. Nobody's gambling there anymore. Um, we got to drive business there, and what can drive business? What are people looking at? Sports gaming. And so that's what we're going to look at, and that's what we're going to. So New Jersey passes special legislation that says, in New Jersey, in the casinos and the racetracks, you can bet on sports. Before the law even goes into effect, the NCA and the four leagues go to court and say, listen, 
we've got PASPA here, you can't do this, this is a federal law. You, you're a violation of the federal law. You're a state, you've gotta basically give sovereign to the federal government. Um, and what the state of New Jersey said is, wait a second, you know, gambling has always been an issue for the states, right? So if New York State wants to have a casino here in Syracuse, that's not an issue for the federal government, that's an issue for the state of, of New York and its citizens. We're the ones who decide. Um, if Massachusetts wants to have gambling all throughout the state, that's for them, it's not for us, right? That's a state issue, it's not a federal issue, and it's always been a, a state issue. But the federal government coming in and saying, well, we need to regulate the integrity of the sport, we need to protect sport, that's the issue. And so for six years, the case kind of went up and down the courts. And New Jersey, all, they originally lost at the district court, they went to the Third Circuit, they lost there. They go to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court says, we're not gonna hear this. So it goes back to the, the district court because New Jersey tweaked its law. They lose at the district court, they go back to the Third Circuit, they lose again, and now they're back at the Supreme Court. And surprisingly, the Supreme Court said, you know what, we'll listen to it this time. Even though, even though the Solicitor General said, no, the law was good, we don't wanna to touch it. So everybody, everybody said, New Jersey's bad, New Jersey's gonna lose, the law is good, we're good. Um, it finally gets to the Supreme Court, and in a seven to two decision, they basically strike down the law. And rightfully so. So if you look at the 10th Amendment and the separation of powers between the federal government and the state, clearly this is an issue that the federal government has said it's important, but the law itself doesn't do what it was designed to do. If they want to regulate sports gaming, which the court said the federal government can do, so once again, tomorrow the federal government can come in and say, no sports gaming. But as long as they're going to allow any gaming, they've got to allow it everywhere. Um, and so that's kind of where we are today. But going back to the original question, why can't we do it on the internet, is we do still have certain laws on the book that interfere or, or that prohibit gambling via wire, via phone, those types of things. And so those technically are still illegal. So for example, even though I can bet down in New Jersey and a casino in New Jersey has an app that says I can put bets on, I can't do it here in New York because once I cross state bounds, it's gonna shut off my service and it's not gonna take my bet. All right, and the same type of thing because those would be illegal bets under federal law. But today, excuse me, yeah. today, there's gotta be 20 sites where a person can make a bet on the internet to an offshore entity that covered their name. Yeah, just because you can do it doesn't mean it's not illegal. I mean, I could walk down Syracuse and place a bet on a game too. Mm -hmm. um, Go to a cigar store. And yeah. You know, I'll go to Rockies after this right. and I'll place it <laughs> <a> right. <laughs> yeah. right. this, this, is, this is back to, to your original statement at the, at the beginning of the presentation. It's about money. It's about regulating, it's about it's about regulating the money, getting, taking away the underground market and bringing it above board so that states can tax it and use it you know, however, however they please, whether yeah. it's education or, or any other. And the leagues have been trying to tap into this market without kind of doing what they say they're prohibiting. I mean, if you go to watch Yankee Stadium, they've got the Mohegan Sun, you know, uh, box out there or signs. They're getting sponsorship money. If you go to Massachusetts, they've got the Massachusetts Lottery and you scratch off the Red Sox or the Celtics or the Patriots. Those teams are getting revenue from those gambling, you know, operations. Um, they're not giving their logos or they're not allowing Mohegan Sun to, to use, you know, basically take their billboards for free. So the Yankees, and, and on top of that, we've got fantasy sports where the <clears throat> leagues are actually investing in the operations, right? So they're making the money. The owners are investing in it. But the leagues as well. Yeah, yeah Major League owners, Baseball. The, the guy who owns the, the Boston Patriots has got a piece of the action yeah. into one of those fantasy right. sports. Right, and the Dallas Cowboys as yeah. well. Oh yeah. yeah. There was a question back yeah. there. Who were the two Supremes that voted to Against it. You know, that's a Where did they go to school? <laughs> <laughs> well, it has to be Harvard or Yale, right? There's only two schools that we allow Supreme Court justices from. Um, 
Um, I, I actually can't remember right now. Um, Google it. I would say that there were probably. Um, looking up. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I just can't remember. I mean, they weren't. I mean, even the even the dissent kind of supported the argument that the states had the right to do it. The question is whether you know how they could do it. Um, you know, and, and once again, the, the leagues have always been kind of hypocritical. They've argued for the integrity of the sport, but as we've seen, they generate so much more money because of the sports line. I mean, how many of us would want to watch the Syracuse game this past weekend as Syracuse is pouncing Connecticut, pouncing Connecticut? But you know what? 30 right. points. 30 points, right. We that need to sit right on the nose. We That's a bad to, bet. <laughs> we need to sit there till the very end of the game because we got, thir we got the Syracuse said. given 30 <laughs> points. Right? So we've got to sit there, and that's good for television, that's good for media. So we had some friends over, we're going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now, but, so, but just, oh, go ahead. Well, are you saying then that uh, whatever comes down the road, college sports will be involved just as much as oh, college that, uh, sports? I think or it's no. gonna, as much as as much as the NCAA likes to play the sanctimonious card, I think <laughs> I think the money is going to be too great and too massive that they can't afford to sit out. I, I really do. Now, how how they're going to if they're going to decide the conferences on a on a conference wide level, the ACC, the Big Ten, the SEC, if they're going to decide, you know, you guys handle it themselves, you know, I think that's something to watch for. I mean, I, I know the the NCAA. The association that's headquartered in Indianapolis and who is responsible for running the March Madness basketball tournament, they have come out and said it's actually a six to three vote. Uh, was it six three? Six to three. Uh, they have said they're they're not going to, to get involved in it. Now that doesn't mean the individual <laughs> conferences can't get involved in it, but how would they get involved? How could they suck off that money? Well, I guess just to add on to this, the NCAA has already tweaked some of their rules. Prior to the decision, if a state had a, like Nevada, you could not have an NCAA championship in Nevada. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. Um, after the ruling, they said, well, okay, you know, <laughs> wherever you want. So we're going to have NCAA events in Nevada, championship events, Final Fours, whatever. We're going to have football championships. And once again, it's kind of hypocritical because even the Pac-12, which doesn't have a team in Nevada, hosted its basketball tournament in in Las Vegas, right? And there's only one reason they're doing it in Las Vegas as opposed to LA or, you know, San Francisco, and it's because their their fans want to gamble, right? Their fans well, want to the LA, uh, I mean, the, the Vegas people who run their convention operation have enough talks, <laughs> enough talks, enough talks, we're going to get this, but, 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 and they get there, okay? And the Big 12, the Pac-12, Understand that right away. They understand that. They don't. They, they don't. Just, their audience are, are yeah, are shooters. Right. I mean, the number one sports gambling event in the United States per volume, the money they receive, is the NCAA basketball tournament. Yeah. Bigger yeah. than the uh, bigger than the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is one day. Yeah. The NCAA basketball tournament's a month long, yeah. um, but the Super Bowl generates, you know, over a hundred million dollars or whatever the, the, you know, just in Vegas, just in legal bets. Um, whereas the basketball tournament, um, three times that. You could not go in to a site, to an NCAA site, and find action there, right there in the aisles and in the stands and in the seats. I'm telling you now, there's guys walking into those sites, into the garden, into Barclay, or wherever, and there's guys taking action right there. Yeah. Uh, well, and Nate wrote a really good piece about college sports uh, for Syracuse.com. And once again, the prediction is that football and basketball attendance at the NCAA level is going down. For the last five to 10 years, depending on the sport, it's all gone down. How do we drive attendance? How do we get students into the arena? How do we get them into the stadium? One prediction is if they can put action on the game. If they can come in and say, okay, I wanna put, you know, Syracuse, Clemson, 21 points, uh, 
I won't tell you about betting on. <laughs> so you're saying, so you're saying, but I'm saying it's going to have want action. Yeah. The students okay. want action. I mean, students are gam I, I gambled when I was in college. I mean, I had a roommate who was a bookie. He took a lot of money. <laughs> uh, you know, so it 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 happened back then. It happens now. Um, it's a concern, it's an issue, because especially for the colleges, because those kids aren't paid. Whereas professional athletes make you know, tens of millions of dollars, um, Syracuse University athletes get a free scholarship worth you know, 75,000 plus other benefits, maybe up to 150,000 a year. But you know what? They have no money in their pocket. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a game gambler and I wanna kind of get them to throw a game for 5,000 bucks, that's a lot of money for somebody who doesn't have any money. Um, it's a tempting target. And the NCAA is worried and rightfully mm -hmm. so. Sure. Um, yeah. But once again, that, that, that fear has always been there. That problem has always been there. If you look at the history of the NCAA, going back to the 1950s with the, um, you know, the um, Kentucky and all the New York teams, New York City teams, mm -hmm. um, big gambling scandal. We've seen Boston College get slapped twice. We've seen it out in Northwestern and Arizona State. Lots of get Tulane. All of those schools have gotten in trouble because their student athletes have taken money. And, and there are there are a lot of unintended consequences to this. That as we get deeper into the discussion, you know, it'll that'll become very apparent. Like to your point, you mentioned the the Connecticut Syracuse football game last week at thirty points, right on the nose of what the spread was. Well, Syracuse had a freshman running back fumble on the goal line. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, yeah. if that if that touchdown yeah. counts and he scores. Syracuse presumably covers because they don't cover. How much money could have been lost on that bet? And now when you have, it. and now when you yeah. have an 18-year-old kid on campus in an environment where his performance is directly responsible to the money you or, or anyone else can make, mm -hmm. what sort of inherent danger does it put that individual student in walking around campus? And hey, your performance in last night's game cost me a hundred bucks or yeah. more. But I'm going to argue that actually by having legalized gambling, it actually brings it out front, and so that we can now, if we're Vegas, if we're the NCAA, we can better track where money is going, on which games, and so I can identify kind of funny lines. So if all of a sudden Syracuse is, let's pick on basketball, um, if Syracuse basketball team always wins, but never covers a game in which they're favored by more than 10, Okay, they always win. You know, I'm not throwing the game, I'm just keeping the score down, right? If that happens all the time, and we can go back and look at some of the games, and we see that one, this one particular player tends to throw it out of bounds, or miss a pass, or you know, blow a bunny layup, or something like that, then that raises red flags for us. Yeah, it walks like a dog. Can do yeah. yeah, but once again, if it's all under the, under, under the table, we don't know where the money is going, and which games, there's a lot of money flowing in on, then it's harder for us to kind of identify those particular problem areas. But there are a certain number of guys that we keep alluding to here that have an investment in, in gambling that are strictly illegal, and some of them are very nice people. How do we handle these guys? I don't think um, underground bookies are going away. Even if, you know, you can bet here in Syracuse at a legal place. I think, you know, most of us, or a lot of people, have relationships with their bookies. Yeah. Um, the other advantage of using a bookie is I don't have to give you the money right away, right? It's all on credit. Yeah. You pay me if I win, I pay you if I lose. Where if I go to the casino, I'm forking out all the money, and I get a little piece of paper, and then I have to go back and collect my winnings. Yeah, you have to physically go. Yeah. Tell people to pick up the phone at home and call. Yeah. And call so it's, money. I think they're, they're always going to be there because just to the ease, right? Yeah. Until until we can make it easier for, for you to bet at the casino than you can at the, the local bookie, um, it's probably going to always be there. Are they nice people? No. Um, you know, but then again, you know, once again, uh, they only become not nice when you start losing and large sums pay. of money. Uh, <laughs> they only become not so nice when you don't pay. When you don't pay. Is there yeah. still a thing called parlays? I mean, in the late 40s and the 50s, I mean, college football, I used to bet on the parlays every weekend. Are they still exist? You go to your barber, you go to a liquor store. Do these things still exist? Yeah, sure. 
I thought they'd maybe be primitive by now. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, Delaware actually has it as their state. That's how they, you know, they kept going. Because mm -hmm. Delaware challenged the leagues back before New Jersey did. Um, and since they actually had the law in the book that had those parlay, you know, book or the spreadsheets, uh -huh. um, they actually, that was the only form of gaming that they could have for about five years until New Jersey won. So, yeah. How are you going to control the financial gift that would be given to a player to throw a, throw a game? I mean, the question is, how do you how control do you that today? Them? Well, the punishment is easy. I mean, A, they lose their scholarship and they go to jail. Yeah. I mean, that's how we've always punished So you're going to have the same even, chaos that you yeah. had in the 1940s, 50s, and early 60s before the law said no gambling. And well, once again, your argue, I guess your argument says in 1992 the law came into effect, right. and all of a sudden no gambling happened in college sports. Not, probably. And I'm arguing that that's, that's not, true. not true. It's not uh, supposed to be openly. Yeah. It wasn't supposed to be before either. Right. In the 50s, it wasn't supposed to be open. It's all with casinos. It's I'm sorry, it's all with gamblers. It's all under the ground. New York, I mean, I think five of the schools in New York City were the ones involved, plus and Kentucky. How. And how. Yeah. yeah. But once again, those schools, those were all basically dealing with um, gamblers um, and, and mob bosses. That had nothing to do with the casinos. And the argument, I guess, I'm trying to make is that if we're, it's legalized, we can start identifying those problem areas before. And how long is it going to take before it's public? Um, and something is done only, about it. If only there yeah. was an answer. Yeah. Well, there, no, I mean, there, there's, there's technology and out there that, that tracks all this stuff live. I mean, they will, they will track the money being bet on a game I'm live. not talking about just the money. I'm talking about the human beings involved. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I mean, like any like any sort of investigation, I think you would have to develop a pattern, and and if there's would that be included in the law? Right now, we have no law. You're talking about the the one that New, or New York passes, right? Yeah. How I mean, are they going to the human being who's involved in throwing a game for the money he received? I wonder, excuse me. Once these young people that are in college that are offered this money, and they get caught, they'll never ever play pro. And that's what these kids want to do. These kids, when they're in high school, they say, what college is going to expose me to the NFL or the NBA or wherever? And they, somebody gives them the message, don't get caught. In fact, that's the 11th commandment, by the way. <clears throat> do not get caught, because if you get caught, you're going to subvert your opportunity to play professional sports. And that's where their, their money will be. be Some exposed. say I'm not good enough to play. Uh, oh, okay. Professional sport, so I'll take the five thousand. I need to pay something, and the heck with it. Yeah, but once again, uh, I guess your argument is that that's not happening today, and I guess my argument, being a little bit more yeah. cynical, is that it is yes. happening today, um, and that once it becomes above board, we're going to be able to better track it because all there's going to be a lot more money that's going to we're going to be able to tr you know using analytics being able to mm -hmm. trace, and so we can identify those problem areas a lot sooner. One of the things that, that Nate, Nate and I haven't talked about yet, and one of the things that the leagues and the NCA also have tried to do is actually get a piece of the, the gambling money that's coming in. How are they gonna do that? It's state law. They basically argued that they deserve what's called an integrity fee. So be, they're the ones who are going to need to police the game as if they're not policing their own games today, right? <laughs> but somehow, somehow, now that it's legal, they're going to have to be much more vigilant in policing their game. Um, and they're going to incur all of these costs, ad costs. So basically what they've asked a state like New York to do is to give them 1% of all monies that are bet on sports. And calling it the interest. Calling it an integrity fee. Integrity tax. Or yeah. Fee, yeah. And interestingly enough, 1% doesn't sound like much, but nice. when you look at it, the casino only gets about 5% of their of all the money they bet. 
And so they're basically saying, we want 20% of all the monies that are bet on sport to come to us. That's a lot of money. That's We're talking millions of dollars um, that would be taken out of the state of, Syracuse, or state of New York's tax rolls that we would pay for you know, policing, um, that we would use for social services for gambling addiction and things like that, um, that we would use to kind of help educate you know, problem gamblers. We're gonna take all of that money out of sport and give it to somebody like James Dolan, um, you know, a billionaire team, <laughs> because he needs it clearly more than we do. We're gonna give it to the you know, New York City or the NBA in New York because they, you know, they don't make enough money. Um, so James Dolan. Yeah. Well, James the Dolan, yeah, the Knicks and the Rangers. Well, he owns a Madison Square Garden operation, which yeah. owns the Knicks and the Rangers. And uh, some television. Yeah. And, and New York obviously has all four major sports leagues, so they would get hit. They would get dinged more than say, you know, Tennessee, who only has the Titans and the Predators. Yeah. But they don't really care. They've actually asked for it from every state. So New okay. West Virginia has been kind of going through their their process, and the leagues are in West Virginia saying, "We want a piece of the pie." There are no professional leagues in West Virginia. Um, what West Virginia has done, however, is they've earmarked money from their gambling operations to go to the University of West Virginia and Marshall University. So a piece of that pie is going to go directly to the university. When and if they get it. Yes. And the argument being is that those universities, because they're playing at the Division I level, are going to incur, they're going to have to hire somebody to police. Once again, I think it's just a way for the athletic department to, to generate more money, to get more money. And they can make that argument because they're, they're state schools, whereas a school like Syracuse is a private institution, probably even though they get some federal funding, certainly not to the degree of, of a state institution, it's probably gonna be a little bit tougher to make that argument that they deserve a cut from New York State. So start from the, so somewhere along the line, New York State has got to cut to the chase. Sooner or later, they've got to sit down and say, what do you think, what do you think, how do, and, and manage this sports wagering dynamite, this bomb that we're sitting at, and we haven't done anything about it, and we're losing money because Massachusetts is getting that money. Guys are driving over there on Saturday, on Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning, and making a bet. Right. I mean, the bigger, the bigger concern is things. New Jersey. Pardon me. The bigger concern is New Jersey because think about all the people that live in New York City in the metropolitan era. Area and just go over the bridge. bridge. Yeah. Just go over the bridge. Yeah, just the go meadow lands, the yeah. bridge. Yeah. Go to the Meadowlands rather so, than so like who's going to drive three hours mm -hmm. to Waterloo if you're a New York City resident when you can just go across the bridge 30, 30 Get on a minutes. boat and go past the two mile <laughs> limit on the Meadowlands. Exactly. You might have some boats out there. Yeah. So okay. I, I think there. So to answer your question, I think there there needs to be an urgency and willpower for New York to get it done, but. Again, when you actually get into the nitty gritty details, there are a lot of complex hoops that I think it's it's worthy to sort of pause a little bit and not just sprint into this thing. They, I, I totally agree it's gotta get sorted out. I mean, sooner or later, people with influence and people with power have gotta sit down and say, we've gotta do this because it, we're getting pitched at every day. I go into a restaurant and they say, what are you, what are you gonna, do something about this. Mm. Okay? Because they gotta pick, right now, in order to make a bet, you gotta get on the internet and fuss with it. And it's not so hard to do, believe me. We were talking before about websites like fullhost.com. It, it makes it so easy to do things. I actually use it for a fundraiser for my Rotary Club. If anybody don't wanna play, come up with 20 bucks and half the club gets half and then the rest is prize money. So how are they gonna regulate something like that? They gotta want to, and they don't want to right now. They don't want to bother you. They don't have the time or the energy or the chaos to go screw around with guys like you. Yeah, I mean it's it's a matter of policing, um, and you know if there's a will, they'll do it. But um, along with education, yeah. Um, so what does it call come down to? All this the last fifty minutes that we've been bantering about, and we know. We know that the governor has to step up to the plate and say, guys, we gotta do something about this. Yeah. And what's it gonna take for that? 
But I think, didn't I think New York is, is, if I were to make a prediction, if I was going to put a bet on something, <laughs> I would bet that this year it's going to happen because, once again, New York sees the money that's going out, out, out of the, the state. Um, Pennsylvania is probably going to add it this year. Um, so once again, making it closer. We've got New Jersey, Connecticut, and Massachusetts are, are looking at it as well. And so New York would basically be the only one that doesn't have it in the you know, surrounding states. Um, the question I think they're really struggling with is the integrity fee and what should they do for really? the leagues. None of the other um, states that have, that have passed legislation have granted an integrity fee. So there's nothing that Nevada does, New Jersey, um, Delaware, or, or Mississippi, none of those states give the, the leagues any type of integrity fee. And so if, Mass, or if New York decides that, you know, we're gonna break the mold and somehow give them money for nothing, um, I think that's where the legislators are going to start dragging their feet. As an aside, you're teaching some courses at the law school. Has this subject ever come up? This sports wagering subject ever come up yeah. in your classes? Then? Well, I mean, that's kind of what I teach sports. So it's sports law, so it is a, it's a big issue. But so you're discussing it over there. And, uh, yeah. Is it, what's the name of that building? Dunham or Derwin or I forget. Deheen. 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 In the Deheen School. So there's guys who are, who are sharp and bright and astute that are coming there in their audience. In the Lamborghinis. I'm glad you're talking about students as opposed to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> students, you gotta, you gotta go up on Marshall Street. Too. I know that in England there's a lot of betting on sports. And how do they control the honesty of the teams? And once again, I mean, it really depends on the sport itself. I mean, if you're looking at professional football, soccer for us, but professional football in England, um, they're generating hundreds of thousands of pounds per week in salary. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you have to give me to throw a game if I'm getting paid $100,000 a week? If I'm getting paid, if I'm Tom Brady and I get $15 million a, a, a year, how much do you have to give me to throw the game? I mean, think about that. How much do you have to give me? That's really hard. Right? And that's why college sports college, makes it easy. College, college sports it's makes it easy. Problem. But where we see kind of gambling coming into play are things like cricket, um, the lower level um, rugby. rugby, football. Okay. You what know, about tennis? Um, tennis is notorious as well. well. Tennis has been, they've caught guys already with a tennis. Yeah, right. so once golf, again. It's, golf is actually a, a yeah. huge uh, sport that, believe it or not, is very popular on in-play betting, which y you bet as the event unfolds. So, you know, Tigers playing on Sunday, you can place a bet hole by hole as you got to get a bird, as you got to get a par, and you, you watch his round. And, and Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Most of you guys knew I grew up on a golf course. And we had what we call a NASA. You understand what a NASA bet is? There wasn't a game my brother and I played that we didn't have a NASA. We were 14 or 15 years old, 17 years old, and we were in action already. Can you imagine what's going on in every golf course? There's betting going on with each other. What's the difference between betting and going on with each other? Than the well, but I think there's a huge difference, actually. I mean, I'm fine with you and your brother playing around the golf and betting each other who's going to win the hole. Mm -hmm. But what you're talking about mm -hmm. is I'm going to throw the match. Yeah. If exactly. I'm playing oh, tennis, right. I'm yeah. not going to play my best exactly. because I'm getting paid to lose. Mm -hmm. And those are, those are serious problems. But once again, they're going on. Um, we try to police them. We have organizations that monitor bets going in and out. Um, if the game, if the, the the people are caught, they get banned from the sport, they go to jail. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's, well, how do you stop people from, right. how do you stop people from, do, you know, committing a crime? Um, if we knew that, we'd live in a better society. And, and once again, we can't do that in sports um, because we can't do it anywhere else. Right? I mean, there's temptation and people are just tempted. It's an easy buck. They don't think they're gonna get caught. 
Um, Particularly kids coming into college who want to go play. Yeah, right. And, and, and you know, this country. Well, a very mediocre thing going on. In well, I mean, look at if you're if you came from. Um, I mean, I don't want to pick the neighborhood, uh, but you came from a less desirable neighborhood. Your family doesn't have a lot of money. All of a sudden, you get a scholarship to come to Syracuse. There are some really wealthy students at Syracuse University, um, and you can't fit in, right? You can't, you don't have the money to go out to lunch, you don't have the money to, to socialize with a lot of these students, because they're doing things, because they have money that they can burn, right? And if all of a sudden I come to you and say, listen, you know, Syracuse favored by 10 tonight, you don't have to lose, you're not losing the game, just win by eight. Here's $10,000. I think Jimmy was stopping to catch it pretty close. The other three guys would catch it. You would I think, think, but you know, once again, it doesn't take much if you're the right player, right? This is going to put an, a much added burden on officials mm -hmm. in sports. Officials are going to have to be have an educational program. It's going to be their responsibility. Right. For example, a tennis match when someone looks like they're throwing the tennis match. The official and the chair's gonna have to walk down from the chair, which happened. At the US Open. Which happened and said, what the hell's wrong with you? What are you throwing the match? We don't know exactly what he said. Right. All of a sudden, starts to play better. Very won. interesting, yeah. don't well, you think? But the officials can be involved also. Well, we saw the NBA. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, in, in some ways, they, they have more control over the mm -hmm. game than a player in some ways. You know, you especially depending on what the point spread is, we call the right foul. Um, right at the you know, end. Right at the, the right at the touch yeah, foul. You know, blow a whistle and things happen. And so, in some ways, it's easier for an official. Um, you know, touchdown, and all of a sudden there's a late mm -hmm. flag yeah. coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> things like that. So, a little bit, yeah. So what have we learned here today? We have learned you have to have the highest level of integrity. <clears throat> you guys are smoking weed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just isn't going to be. You're dealing with people who are easily influenced, or whatever. But the basic topic, concept that I had here was to say, what's it going to take for the states to make this thing happen so it will be as common as going into the way by the court? That's what I. That's my craziness of this thing, and I think it's got to happen. I think it's going to happen. I agree with you. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's got to happen. Well, I think it's going to happen. Um, it's going to happen because it's got to happen. Yeah. John, I understand basically about the human element. Okay, I've been around for a couple of weeks. And I understand. Do you get this gray hair and this, this stomach ache from <laughs> not knowing what's going on? And I don't understand personally why it hasn't happened already. Why what hasn't happened? Why we haven't been able to make have gambling legal. Not just to drive over to Bridgeport, because I don't think Onondaga, I don't think uh, Onondaga County wants gambling at all. They, they won't let you uh, uh, have uh, windows here in Onondaga County. So, people, so you got to go over to Bridgeport in Madison County to, uh, to make a bet. I think that's the case. So you got to go to to get down. I don't see why you can't go down on South Warren Street and make a bet. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, or call a guy on South Warren. The easiest explanation that I can give you is that the Supreme Court's decision came so late in the term. I mean, they had, they had heard arguments in December. They could have passed their decision in January or February or March, anytime, but they waited until May when almost three quarters of all the state legislatures had already gone home for the summer. It already basically closed shop. New York being one of the latest legislature was still open, but we had a very limited time to pass law. Um, it's, a, it's a thorny issue when you start getting into it, especially with this question of integrity fee and the leagues being in New York City and you know, we're, we're a sports place. So, so you know, they, they, they treaded lightly, I think rightfully so, taking a year to kind of work through the, the proposals. Um, they get to see what's happening in New Jersey, how things are working out. They get to see what's happening in Delaware. Um, they get to see those states work out some of the kinks. 
And once again, as we've seen, even those states are starting to tweak their rules, right? So now we can put an app, if I'm sitting in New Jersey and I can bet on some, some states require that I, I can bet on the, my phone, but I have to be in the casino, physically in the casino. Um, so, so once again, everything is changing. And I think New York, by, by waiting a year, while we might lose some, you know, I think one of the estimates I got from New Jersey, the first year or the first month, they generated, um, I want to say $75 million in bets. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the very first month. Um, mm. And so, you know, that's not the tax revenue that they got, but that's, they're getting tax, a portion of that. And so we're gonna lose some tax money that first year, but better, I guess, better safe than sorry. Sooner or later you gotta call the head. Yeah. We all know that. And then I hope a year from now, that the three of us, and maybe more people, will show up and say, this is fun. This is what it's all about. Oh, this Why did it take so long to get here? Or whatever. This is this is just the beginning. I mean, like John said, this this is this is a historic ruling that has only been in effect for six months. I mean, this is something that's going to have ramifications for decades. And as technology as as technology changes and and the laws continue to be revised, I mean, what what New York passes in January or, or early next year may look entirely different to what New York betting regulations look like five, ten years from now. So this is it's important to sort of contextualize it. And just because we're in like chapter one of, you know, a 50 chapter book and what happens early next year may be something that is only the scratches the surface of what this ultimately looks like 10, 20, 50 years from now. As an aside, I think there's about four of you covering football for this. Don't tell me that you guys are sitting around not talking about the line. Oh, absolutely. That I'm. Yeah. And not only just the Syracuse line, but the Purdue game, or the Boston College game, or the, the Alabama game, or whatever. And everybody looks at what the line is so you can get a value. The, the line is basically telling you the value of that team. So it's not just gambling, it's the mental look at how good that team is. It's, it's not just the gambling card, but if you say Syracuse is a 22 or 21, started off at 18, now it's up to 23, I, I'm sorry. Uh, why is it moving and how do they get to that point and how really good is Clemson, and how really weak is Syracuse, and how do they develop it, and all these little questions that the line immediately starts you to think about, socially and mentally. Yeah. Well, I mean, just in right. general, I mean, the line, the line is not so much a predictor of who's going to win or lose. No. It's virtually who, where's the money being bet on. Yeah. And so, and, and did you ever, just, did you ever question where do they get the line? How do they? What's that starting point? I think it's one of the most fascinating <laughs> fascinating things that's out there because they're they're so close. I mean, not only just in, in you know the margin of, of victory, but you know how many total points are gonna be scored in a game. I mean, like I said, I mean last week Syracuse was a thirty point favorite by kickoff. Thirty and a half point favorite by kickoff. I mean <laughs> unbelievable. I heard at one time Lloyds of London was covering all kinds of things with their insurance, the way they do things. Are they still involved with sports or? I mean, I I don't know if they're involved in the gaming, yeah, like we're talking about. I do know that they still do individual premiums for individual <coughs> athletes. So, you know, if you're Tiger Woods, you get an insurance policy that, you know, my back won't fall out, break out again or something like that. So they do those types of things. But I don't know if they would do something like, you know, I'm going to bet, you know. Well, in fact, I heard right. all kinds of stories. Yeah. Well, you yeah. might be able to speak to this. I, I know, like, so in hockey, the Las Vegas Golden Knights were this expansion franchise. And at the start of the hockey season, their odds to win the Stanley Cup were absolutely astronomical just because they were a new franchise. 
they did some kind of an expansion draft where they're just plucking sort of the the leftovers from from every other team. And as the hockey season progressed, you know, <laughs> they won a lot of games and got all the way to the Stanley Cup final. And I know that a lot of the Vegas casinos were very concerned about getting a a, a huge hit just because of how many people locally bet on their team to win the whole thing at the beginning of the year. I don't know if, I know, I feel vaguely remember reading about how casinos were insured that if, they're, if they did have this massive payout that they would somehow be able to mitigate. Really? What they're, plus, what they're plus they used to lay off bets if they were concerned. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so the, there's too much money, you right. have to lay it off somewhere. That's a subject within itself. You understand laying off bets, you understand the concept of how it's done and why it's done and where it's done. You gotta have a connection. You gotta be, if, if you're getting too much money on Syracuse, you gotta be able to call up a guy and says, can you take some of this Boston money for me? I mean, you just got to. Sooner, can, I'll tell you something. You know who the biggest bookmakers in the world are? Insurance companies. Insurance companies. If you ever want to legalize bookmaking, insurance companies are the bookmakers. The house never loses with insurance companies, right? <laughs> <laughs> They've always got this out of, and they always argue at every, yeah. at every case. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Well, one, right there. Yes. one more for you. Yeah, you talked about how the law is not yet established and will probably change and change. If we have 50 states doing it in 50 different ways, will that not be so That's an interesting point. point. And the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, once again, I guess to be careful, um, I say yes because each of the four states that have laws are different now. Um, New York would come in and pass their own law. That being said, um, the leagues um, have argued that the federal government should come in and pass a uniform law yeah. so that basically all the states would adopt the same law, um, but once again, they'd be 50 different states adopting the same law. We do that with other things you know, uniform commercial code that deals with contracts and commercial paper and things like that. So those are all individual states, but we adopt a uniform law. And that's what the, you know, some of the people are arguing today is that the federal government needs to come in and if not pass a federal law that all the states- I've been to but Vegas, I couldn't figure out what they were doing. They were yeah, yeah. So, so we'll see, but right now it's basically They've opened up the floodgates and it's everybody to them for themselves. Um, and that being said, you know, Pennsylvania's talking about doing it, but Pennsylvania's law that, that they're talking about is going to require that each book, sports book, basically pay a $10 million fee, licensing fee, and a they, front. Yeah, up just, front, just, to, just to be able just to, to, be able to up open up the door. Yeah. Plus, They'd have to pay, I want to say, 30% of all revenues to the state. They're so outrageous that no book would really do this. Um, Maybe they're doing it to keep out the book. No, they want the money. They just, yeah. so, I mean, like New Jersey, New Jersey basically you get a book and it's only a couple hundred bucks. You know, that's what they charge the casinos there to, to open it up. So once again, each state is going to be a little different. Maybe Pennsylvania will come down when that, you know, they get less than they thought. They're they're getting, yeah. they, they, get, they need the money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's fix, it's their fix their roads. Fix their roads. Well, well, it was worth roads. remembering Jimmy yeah. to greet yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.